Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Our sermon text for this morning's meditation is recorded for us in the book of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, verses 14 through 16. But Zion said, The Lord has abandoned me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not show mercy to the son of her womb? Even if these women could forget, I will never forget you. Look, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are never out of my sight. Lord, these are your words, and therefore they are your truth. We ask that you'd increase our faith through them. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, how familiar, how familiar are you with stretch marks? For those women who are watching today who've had children, you probably are very familiar with stretch marks. Stretch marks are marks that can appear on a woman's body as she is pregnant with a child, as the skin is stretched on her abdomen. And those marks can form and sometimes remain permanent even after that child is born. I think most women probably view stretch marks as something that is ugly. And they do whatever they can to apply lotion during pregnancy or anything else to prevent those marks from forming. And of course, if they're still there after pregnancy, they'll do whatever they can to cover them up. But in some ways, stretch marks are beautiful because they are marks on a mother's body indicating what she went through for her child. That pregnancy over those long months, they show her love and concern, her care for her child, they testify as marks on her own body that she might never forget the child of her womb. In God's word for us today, he uses the picture of a mother as a comforting picture of his love for us, as he even indicates that he has placed marks on his own body to remind himself of us that he will never forget us. So today, let us take up the theme that God will never forget you. The context of our reading for today is found in the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah recorded these words some 700 years before the coming of Christ. Much of what he records there, as many of the other prophets as well, is the foretelling of God's destruction, his punishment and chastisement that he's about to bring upon the children of Israel and Judah. As he's going to allow foreign nations to swoop down and destroy their cities and haul them away into captivity. And why? It's because his people had fallen into adultery. Just some examples of this we see in the king of Judah as he even establishes an altar to a false god even in the temple of the one true God as he even sacrifices his own sons to the fire in worship of a false god. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, as the rest of the people, too, were falling into adultery and had very much so forgotten about the one true God. As we turn the pages of the Old Testament, it's maybe hard for us to believe how many times God's people turn away from him in idolatry. It seems that they so easily forget him, yet how could they because God did so much for them? We think about how God rescued his people out of Egypt with incredible miracles, those ten plagues, and the dividing of the Red Sea as he led them safely through to the other side, and then caused those waters to come crashing down upon Pharaoh and his army. Yet they find themselves not so long after at the foot of Mount Sinai, And they watch Moses ascend the mountain to go and speak with God. But so quickly, they forget about Moses and they forget about God. Just over in the course of a few weeks, and they turn to Aaron. And they ask Aaron to form a god out of gold for them. That they might bow down and worship that idol. How could they do it? How could they forget about God who had provided for their physical and spiritual well-being? Don't we see it today too? We see it in our own world as children rebel against their parents. Parents who provide everything for them, who give them life. Parents who give them food and clothing and shelter 
everything, yet they turn against them. We can think about the employee who maybe speaks badly of his boss or employer, even though that employer is providing for him sustenance for himself and for his family, giving him his paycheck every week. We can think about a husband who cheats on his wife, who's been nothing but loving and faithful and caring to him. Sometimes our own actions don't really make sense because they go against the ones who care for us and provide for us so much. But especially concerning God. We can think about times in our lives when we've been very prosperous and successful. Maybe times when we felt that we've accomplished so much in our work. Maybe we've gotten a raise in our job or career. We've patted ourselves on the back. Look at what I've done with my talent and ability. Look at my success. Or maybe concerning our health. As we pat ourselves on the back again, look at how well I've taken care of my body with diet and exercise. This is why I've avoided sickness and stayed so healthy for so long. Or maybe concerning our kids. Look at the great success they are. It's because I put in the time and effort with them. We overlook the fact that God provides talent and ability. God provides us with our bodies. God has provided us with the means of taking care of our children. In our own lives yet, when things can be going so well, we can forget about God or maybe at least just regulate Him to about one hour a week on Sunday morning. And that only if it doesn't interfere with the, interfere with the schedule of the rest of our so busy lives. Maybe only times when it's taken all away that we begin to realize everything that God has done for us. It's just as a parent who sometimes allows their child to experience hardship and suffering for their own good, to lead them back to the right way, so also God at times can allow sorrow, suffering, traumatic experiences to happen in our own lives. Think about this current situation that we're in in our world. Well, it seems that everything's been turned upside down as we're so worried and so afraid when it comes to dying because of this virus or maybe getting sick or maybe losing our jobs or losing our retirement accounts, everything that we've worked so hard for. It all comes crumbling down. We can grow worried with concern and we can see how little we can actually do to care for ourselves in our own lives. We maybe also ask the question, where is God? Has God abandoned me? Has God forgotten me? Realizing that we certainly deserve it because so often we forget about Him in our own lives when things are going so much better. But despite all of this, and especially during times of suffering and sorrow, God would direct us back to himself. And he gives us some incredibly comforting words as he spoke to his people so long ago through the prophet Isaiah. As he gives them, and he gives us the picture of a mother who cares for her children. He says this, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not show mercy to the son from her womb? Even if these women could forget, I will never forget you. It's a beautiful picture of a mother, isn't it? It's been said that the connection between a mother and a child and a child and its father is a thousand times greater between a mother and child than the father and a child. And the reason is, is because that child actually lived in that mother's body, grew in that mother's body for those long nine months. She brought forth that child from her own womb, gave birth to it, and we think about that traumatic experience. She even cared for that child, fed that child, nursed that child on her own breast. Yes, that connection is so strong, so great between mother and child. And it is possible that a mother could forget about her children. We think about in our world today how these sorts of things make headlines in the newspaper. 
if a mother abandons her child in a dumpster, or maybe even takes the life of her own children. We think about how our own society views that as so horrific because this sort of thing never happens. Mothers love their children and will do anything for them. This is for sure the exception and not the rule. But God isn't focusing on the negative here in our text for today. Those exceptional cases when a mother abandons her child or even takes the life of her own child. But he's giving the positive example of a mother who cares dearly for her child with unconditional love. It's been said of a child whose face is disfigured, or maybe even just plain ugly, that he has a face that only a mother could love. And how true it is, mothers overlook many faults and flaws. I think of the, the many times that I've seen on TV horrible criminals that are, are accused of terrible crimes, of murder and rape, and yet their mother is still there at their side. Even though the world might forsake them and point the finger at them, the mother is still there and wants to support her child. This is the picture that God gives to us of himself and his love for us. It's the picture of a mother's love for a child. That unconditional love, no matter what, that he will not forget about us, that he will not abandon us ever. And he goes even further in our lesson for today as he says this, Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. The picture God uses here in our text is the picture of tattooing. Now, tattooing was something that God had forbidden for the children of Israel in the Old Testament. They weren't supposed to place tattoos on their body because it was something that the heathen nations around them did in order to worship their God or to worship the dead. Yet God gives us this picture of tattooing, that he engraves his people Zion on the palms of his hands. It's interesting that both in the military and also among civilian employers, that you see that they don't usually want to recruit or hire employees that have tattoos on their hands. And the reason is, is that other tattoos on the body can usually be hidden hidden pretty well by clothing. But your hands are something that you work with every day. They can't be covered with gloves often. They need to be exposed. They need to be seen. They're always in front of you. So God also uses this picture that this mark, this engraving is placed on the palms of his hands to remind us that we are ever in front of him, that he can never forget about us. It's interesting that among the marks of their, on the body, there are two different very common marks that can appear on people's bodies. One is tattooing and the other is a scar. It's interesting to note the difference between a tattoo and a scar. Usually a tattoo is something that someone intends to place on their body for a specific reminder. But a scar is different, isn't it? A scar is a mark, a permanent mark on the body that's a result of an accident or maybe a surgery. And a scar brings with it an experience that the person will never forget no matter what. There was a young boy who had a beautiful mother whose face, though, was marked by a terrible scar on the right side. This boy was always kind of embarrassed and almost even scared to look at his mother's scar. In fact, he he never even wanted to talk about it at home. As that boy grew older, as he got into kindergarten, into school, The time came for his mother to have to go in for a parent-teacher conference. And the boy didn't want to go. He wondered what people would say when they saw his mother's scar. He imagined the way that they would stare at her. So when the teacher came, or the parent came to school and sat down with the teacher in their conference, the young boy hid under one of the desks because he didn't want to be there. 
he was again embarrassed of his mother. Over the course of their conversation, as the teacher and parent were talking to each other, the teacher eventually asked the mother, how did you get that horrific scar? And the mother went on to tell the story about how many years ago when her son was just a, a tiny infant, at a terrible fire in the house, and the boy was sleeping in his room, that the fire was consuming the entire house, she ran back into the house to rescue him out of his crib. But just as she is about to lift him out of his crib, one of the beams from the ceiling came crashing down upon her, hit her in the face, and knocked her out. Thankfully, a fireman came rushing in and rescued the baby and the mother and brought them to safety. She went on to tell the teacher that if she had to do it again, she would do so every time because of her love for her son. Upon hearing this, the boy ran out from under the table. With tears in his eyes, he hugged his mother because he had not fully known why she had had that scar. In fact, it was a sign, a symbol of her love and commitment to him. When we read the words of our text for today, it's hard for us not to think about the marks of the nails in Jesus' hands, the marks that were there even after he had risen from the dead. We now know why those marks were there. They were there because of us, because of his tremendous love for us. Us people who had turned against him and forsaken him and forgotten him on so many occasions in our lives when things are going so well. Yet he knew what our sins deserved. He knew the punishment that we deserved. Despite our unfaithfulness to him, he was faithful to us. If we'd asked him today, knowing what you know now, Lord, knowing us and our sin, would you still do it? thousand times yes he would do it he would go through it all because of his tremendous love for you and for me that love that moved him to suffer the the pain of the nails and so much more the agony of hell for our sins he endured it all because of his undying unconditional love for us it's on this mother's day we recall the incredible love that our mothers had for us, especially in bringing us through those nine months of pregnancy, giving birth to us, caring for us at such a young stage in our life. We think about their unconditional love that they have showered down upon us throughout our growing years and even today. It's incredible love. But it's just a picture of God's love for you and for me. It's a picture of his unconditional love, a reminder that God, like a mother to a child, God will also never forget us. And in case you ever doubt that, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of grief, in the midst of suffering, you need only look no further than the marks of the nails in Jesus' hands, that marks that testify even today of his incredible love for us. Let's know this. God will never forget you. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forevermore. Amen.